Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's report. It's for June 1st. Well, a little bit of uh, that softening continued, and we got a nice spike here of MBI white. Um, is it going to be enough to really send things uh, much lower? Not likely. Um, already getting a turn up of uh, MBI magenta with it, and also uh, MBI yellow. So they're continuing to move in the right direction. You still have blue over uh, gray, which is sort of a longer term read on that. From a DSC standpoint, you don't see a short activation at this particular stage. It's just sort of neutralized, and this is just that uh, kind of fill back in. And, you know, while it wasn't a red candle uh, from before on the NASDAQ, we could see that things were just a little bit more uh, heated with the positive extremes. So a little bit more of the fill back, and literally all it's doing is getting closer to the 76. It hasn't even reached the 76%. So much to do about nothing in that uh, construct. And when you look at it from a broader economic standpoint, while things aren't super exciting, the economy is chugging along. And that's all it takes uh, to have an impetus for things to get better. Uh, versus get worse and since more people are going to be prone to the idea that it's going to get worse and be fearful the market loves to trade counter to that and that's exactly what we're seeing at this particular stage uh the flight into treasuries also representing uh, significant concern uh, and again there's nothing suggesting that the fed is about to change course or do anything we looked at the latest uh, job opening numbers and that still impressive uh with the labor shortage so um the Fed not being able to cause unemployment, which is really what it needs to create in order to slow things further, um, they may have to continue on the rate move, uh, which sounds shocking and uh, like a death nail, but no, um, when you have few job openings. So this gets back to what I had been talking about, well, geez, last year, about how things would be more regional and kind of cyclically flow through the economy. Um, and they did a really fantastic job filling in the supply chain difficulties in that, uh, which staved off, I think, a far worse uh, setup. The fact that oil is easing off, the longer this remains at this particular point, um, the more encouraging the signs are. It's not too hot. It's still elevated enough to where it's still sucking free liquidity out, but it's not draining at an excessive rate that it did before when the initial spike took place. So. You know, again, this is, you know, it's not too hot, not too cold situation. And I, I really caution people who are in this, uh, you know, the sky is falling syndrome just because uh, things aren't running at, you know, super hot pace. You know, didn't need the inflation in the first place, but, uh, you know, it served quite a few purposes, at least from a Fed viewpoint. Uh, from a Euro standpoint, that's problematic because if the U.S. continues to chug along, uh, it's only going to exacerbate the fact that the EU really is not, and that is clearly problematic. It's still within the comfort range. It's not until they break below that 104 that things start to get a little bit uh, dicey for them, and they'll have to intervene like they did when it went sub one dollar. But uh, you know, from a real standpoint, sub one dollar would still be you know uh, overvaluing the euro, given where things are for them. Uh, from a gold standpoint, you know, this kind of you know Malay situation really isn't going to promote anything, but if we start to see a little pickup of any inflationary indications again, um, that's where you'll see the spike in gold. And it's not going to take that for crypto in the broader sense, but um, they've been, it's been moving pretty tandem to gold. It just makes a higher beta move uh, than gold in most cases. And at this particular spot, you've got a spike MBI white, so we would expect that 0% to be filled down to 25.9. So we'll be looking for that one. That's a pretty clean representation. Um, it's a lot softer from an ETH standpoint. And that's just because Bitcoin had been leading things uh, overall in general from that earlier one. So, you know, you're getting into a soft crypto period, uh, choppy market. This is going to be the norm. This is what the norm used to be. Uh, before things uh, got corrupted with all of that free money. Um, we had marked the positive extreme. So we had this one yesterday where we came down to 4193. The next one was 4172, which was filling up the positive extreme from right there. And oh, what a shock. We came right to that, supported off it, and moved right back to the previous one.
so <laughs> you know that, that that was the reason i had put that chart up and posted it on our skype chat and that as well because it's, it's so obvious where this was going to play out and they did it perfectly uh, exactly what you would expect so all things being equal right in line Everyone hopefully can start with their indicators for the month and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll for, I think it'll be an exciting uh, June. Uh, we're not going to continue to see more of the malaise. You need a period of it before you then have a breakout where you're able to have convinced one side or the other to capitulate, give up, or at least uh, back off. And I think we're getting close to that uh, point here from a 5K standpoint. Uh, the early morning drawdown started and never let up. It'll you know, brief little pause in it, but then it just continued back down uh, on a regular basis. We cut a little bit of strength towards the end of the day, and that's just short covering, which has kind of been consistent what we've seen for the down moves. Just like the up moves, we get a little bit of pullback, and then here we are in the post market. A lot of bars of nonsense because of time, but from where it closed, slightly elevated, uh, currently up about four, half, five. So, all things being equal, pretty darn good stuff. As always, though, trade well. Look for me on Skype chat.